Two of Africa's deadliest snakes coming up. Which snake is responsible for the most snake bites in Africa, period, as a whole country? It's definitely the puff adder. I know everybody's going to pull soft scale viper and the most deadliest is the black mamba, but we're going to give you the breakdown on it and why and which snake actually causes the most damage coming up. What's up, Venom Squad? Hey, welcome to another episode. Hey, we're gonna hit on some points today about some of Africa's deadliest snakes. And we're gonna kind of mix it up a little bit with all of it. But, um, hey, before we get started, I wanna thank my generous supporters over here. Thank you guys so much. Hey, just so everybody knows, we love the whole Venom Squad and any kind of support you give us is greatly appreciated. If it's as simple as sharing our videos, it means a lot to us. So, thank you guys so much from Venom Central. The shirts, guys. I, I couldn't be more happier how they came out. We didn't know how these shirts were gonna look with an actual photograph imprinted on them, but they came out spectacular. And we are so happy with them. We're going to do a whole series of these guys. And of course, the first one is the Kaboom Viper. And we picked this animal because it's because it's so colorful and it looks so cool on the shirt. And we picked all earth tone colors, guys, you know, to actually go with the animals. So get them while they're hot, guys. <laughs> And uh, we're making them affordable. We want everybody to be able to afford them. Hey guys, thank you to the people who's already bought them. It, 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 it's a great help. Today we're gonna hit on some of African species. And of course the big biggest, the African heavyweights, the big monster gaboons and puff adders and rhino vipers and stuff like that. But to encompass this whole thing, this video really is gonna be about number of bites. What snake causes the most damage? And of course it is the puff adder. And I know a lot of people pull off internet sources, you know, oh, it's soft scale viper, this and that. You know, soft scale vipers are accountable for a lot of bites in Northern Africa, okay? That's Northern Africa, more arid regions. But Central Africa and South Africa, it's puff adder. And the count of bites, the numbers outweigh, outweigh the damn soft scale vipers significantly. So you gotta understand it, it, it's a numbers game. And soft scale viper antivenom now, there is nine monovalent antivenoms available for soft scale vipers. And there's actually only a couple different polyvalent antivenoms available for your Southern African species, like your gaboons and your puff adders and stuff. But we're gonna get into that. But anyways, guys, we're gonna bust out a couple snakes. We're gonna have a little fun. I'm gonna show you guys some cool animals and don't go nowhere because the end of the video, we're gonna feed some of the big bittest. The fangs in your face is coming. Okay, guys, to start out, we're going to talk about kaboom vipers and rhino vipers. And I'm going to tell you, now, even though this snake only hits the list sometimes at number three or four, it, it doesn't come in contact with a lot of people. It's actually, it's actually a very secretive snake that lives in deep jungle habitat. But I'm going to tell you, the problem with kaboons is, of course the venom yield, the fang size. They put out a massive yield of venom. So bites that happen are serious. And it's, it's a very cytotoxic venom and it's very tissue damaging. And the main factor in this is antivenom and antivenom availability and where you're located at when you get bit. You know, the, 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 the infrastructure of Africa, I don't quite understand. I know it's, it's, you know, a lot of the remote villages don't have refrigeration. They just don't have the capabilities to keep antivenom or to have a proper healthcare system. So, you know, bites are serious there. And to tell you the truth, like I've even conversed with some keepers. With, I mean, there's a lot of talented venomous keepers in South Africa that keep a lot of exotic species. And I don't understand why they can't get any venom. And I've actually asked a few people and, and I was pretty much stonewalled and you know, I, I, I didn't get an answer. I mean, I know they can import a lot of exotic species from Central and South America and Asia and they can get the animal, but they can't get any venom. So I don't know if it's a law there or, or, or what it's, 
what the whole problem is, but getting antivenom in Africa is a problem. So, regardless of the fact, the gaboons are pretty low on the list. They are a dangerous animal, but bites don't happen that often. So, it only puts them at like number three or four. So, you know, but the problem is when a bite does occur, it's serious. It's very serious. The cytotoxic venom is tissue damaging and it is extremely serious. And a lot of deaths that are, okay, big dude. <laughs> a lot of deaths, yeah, and I'm back here at a pretty good safe distance to this big boy, but a lot of deaths that occur are, are you know, caused by secondary infection because a lot of the biggest bites, amputation takes place. And that's the answer to it. It's like, okay, you get in the hand without any venom or without proper treatment, they end up amputating that extremity. So it, it, it's an ugly bite. And gaboons, I'm gonna tell you, they're, even though their temperament isn't, is nowhere near a puff adder. I mean, puff adders are just, they're just grumpy little dudes, okay? Gaboons are more chill. Even though this guy's giving us a little bit of heavy breathing and stuff, he's just kind of letting us know, you know, just respect me. And the stripes are wild. Which you'll see in the fangs in your face. You've all seen it before if you're part of the Venom Squad. They are all over the place. They can strike in any position. But honestly, you damn near have to step on a gaboon to get it to bite you. And I've heard the stories and I've seen a lot of stuff in captivity. They'll, they'll tolerate a lot of stuff, okay? But you never know when they're going to bite you. And, and that's just a fact. So free handling the booms and taking all them liberties, it's not that damn smart, okay? <laughs> but, and this guy is bigger than gentle as he is. I still give him all the respect he deserves. But according to puff adder bites and gaboon bites, of course, puff adders are ranging up there. They are huge numbers, okay, compared to gaboon bites. And for me, my, look how long he is. <laughs> For me, just on a keeper standpoint, working with gaboons and puffs, I see it firsthand. The whole, come here big dude, where are you going? You stay away from mama. The whole attitude thing is completely different. Puffs will only tolerate so much and they become very defensive. So that's one of the big reasons why puff bites are huge in numbers. I mean, they're a lazy snake and they're very cryptic, just like the gaboon. They're rarely seen, and they'll sit in one spot for a long time and let you damn near step on them, and they're going to pop you. But gaboons don't come in contact with people too often. They are definitely a, a, a primary forest jungle snake, you know what I mean? So, But bites are serious, and they need to be taken seriously. But this is a serious player on the list, guys. Okay, guys, the puff adder, the bidisari tans. Now, this animal ranges throughout... Africa is it, it, it's we'll put a range map in it's got a huge range and this snake is definitely the animal responsible for the most snake bites in Africa now I know a lot of people and I mentioned this before saw scale wiper deadly snake in Africa causes the most deaths and in actuality the recent years with the development of nine specific monovalent antivenoms saw scale bites and deaths attributed to soft scales has went significantly down. But I'm gonna tell you, if you guys want a good source for African snake bites and all that stuff, hit up the African Snake Bite Institute. And I follow these guys, and I'll tell you, now these guys are there with their boots on the ground, okay? And they're trying to change things in Africa with the poor infrastructure and, and, and medical help and all that stuff in some of these really remote areas. They're trying to change things and actually teach people how how to identify, how to treat, how to, and actually how to even maybe extract venom and, and, and set up their own, their own uh, institutes to, to create revenue for some of these poor, poor areas in, in Africa, you know. But the puff adder is accountable for the most bites, okay. Even though, say, the black mamba, okay, we all know the black mamba is, he's, just drop dead dangerous okay and the venom is he is definitely the most dangerous snake in Africa bar none but it's the number of bites okay literally say say if you were bitten by say if a hundred people were bitten by a mamba right say in a year span probably I mean the statistics would be you know 
a great deal of fatality with them 100 bites because mambas are just that dangerous. It's probably more in the range of, you know, 80% death rate with a mamba, okay? And that's even probably with anti-venom. But the puff adder bites outweigh the mamba bites by thousands, okay? If 100 people get bit by mambas, you better believe there's probably two to 3,000 that have been bitten by puff adders because they're just that prolific, they're that abundant, and they're that grumpy that they don't take no mess and they're gonna bite anything around them that moves. And now this is one of our <laughs> rather chill species of puff. This one is, is, is tolerable, it's a big female. I can't do this with the males. They're all over the place striking at me. They're, they're just, they're, they're cheeky little guys, okay? But the puff adder is the guy that's responsible for the most damage. And with this highly, highly cytotoxic venom, it's so tissue damaging, most bites, even with treatment, end up in an amputation. But the numbers recently have changed because of the production of some new antivenoms and things and a, a good polyvalent that works on all of the African species, well, most of them, is actually working really well. Okay, you know, the numbers with puff adder bites, it, of course, is the problem, the, the sheer mass of it. And even with treatment, with, with, with proper medical treatment and, and, and anti-serum and everything that's needed, um, the death rate is still at like 5% fatality. And that's with treatment. So that's serious, you know, to where, say, a mamba would be much, much higher, a black mamba, any of the mambas. But... It's the numbers, okay? It's really, it's the numbers, guys. These guys outweigh the mambas by thousands. But follow that snake bite initiative. It's a great source for all this stuff. Um, and like I said, those guys are doing some awesome work. Check them out. So it's the numbers. This guy does the most damage. When it comes to vipers, this is it. This is the end of the line. This guy does a lot of damage, but uh, but anyways, I'm going to put this guy back. Hey guys, don't go nowhere. Fangs in your face. It's coming. All right, guys, we're going to start this party today with feeding some of the some of the puff adders, some of the big heavy hitters of Africa. This is the Bidisari Tans. This is one of our big females, one of our big grabby females. And she is inching up. She's got that tongue working. And this snake is extraordinarily patient. It'll wait till that rat is almost touching its nose before it goes, goes ahead and explodes into a strike. Oh, there you go, little girl. Okay, another big puff adder, and this animal is in a kind of a, a weird position, so it's going to need to pick up some smell. I'm trying to keep this one away from that male over there. And a little vibration. Oh, yeah! Man, things are so freaking fast, it scares you every time it happens. <laughs> they are just blazing. The hungry puff adder right there. Alright, girl, we're going to leave that one right there. And we're going to jump over and feed the male. See that behavior? See what that boy's doing right there? I call that nestling. He's kind of nestling in. 
He's got his tongue working. He knows there's a prey at him close, and he's getting ready to getting ready to pop. Okay, we're gonna give him a little bit of vibration here. He is definitely in hunt mode. Oh yeah! that son of a bitch hard <laughs> I can feel at the end of the tongs and this guy usually hits him and lets him go he doesn't hang on too often all right buddy we're gonna set that right there for you Let's see where the fangs penetrated a little bit of blood already starting to come out that's that cytotoxic venom already taking effect on tissue and look at it back here that's just how far the fangs split open. Okay. All right, big guy. But he is a beautiful specimen. The males are prettier than the females in the puff adders. In this locale, anyways. Okay, and for our next heavy hitters on the list, of course, is the Gaboon Viper. Let's get this guy lined up correctly. There, there it goes. There's the tongue. There's the cue. Lord, oh my word, <laughs> that boy, that boy jumped sideways, that was so cool, <laughs> and it's a little scary because he's getting big, you know, and you really got to be mindful of where you're at with this big son of a bitch, <laughs> uh, that's a bit of rhinoceros, <laughs> big old gaboon viper, let's go over there and feed his girlfriend now. Get in there, big boy. Look at this, y'all. <laughs> Tell me if that's not a gaboon. It knows it's feeding time. Go ahead and pick up some smell there, little girl. Interesting to see what kind of strike she does on this. While she's already periscoped up like that. She needs to put herself in position. was a good one she's like I will adapt huh girl Jesus look at the venom glands on that snake are just depressed her whole head's caved in <laughs> she means business and she's holding it up there high okay and for our last kaboon of the day He knows there's something in there. There you go, buddy. <laughs> Very fast. I can't wait to see these in the slow-mo. That a good job, boy. Okay, guys. Next, we're gonna do our little peewees, our little rhino vipers. Unfortunately, they're they're still they're still little youngsters, but just lately they have been hitting with ferocity. <laughs> that is just crazy. And look, this little guy's already this well, this little girl, she's already getting in position here. Oh, 
You missed it, baby girl. Grab it again. Hit it. There you go. That a girl. And we're going to play these back in slow-mo and just check out their little strike sequence and see how they look. But this light that I use on this camera just washes everything out on this, this little mini setup we're using. But let's jump over and try another one. Okay, let's try this little male. Oh, yeah, he's already on target. He's in shed again. These things stay in constant shed because we're constantly growing. Look at that. Breathing just got labored. He's building energy. <laughs> He's getting ready to pop. There you go, Bubba. That <laughs> a good boy. He's going to hold it up there. True bit is fashion. Yep, there's your prize, buddy. So, the moral of the story is, the puff adder, he's responsible for the most bites and probably the most deaths in Africa as a whole. And of course, the soft scale wiper, he does a little bit of damage also. Not as bad as it used to be. And of course, the mamba is definitely the most deadliest snake in Africa. But when you do the numbers, this puff adder is out of the ballpark. He's He's in mass, okay? <laughs> but anyways, hey, I hope you enjoyed this. Hey guys, go follow the, the African Snake Bite Initiative. It's a wonderful thing these guys are doing. They got their boots on the ground and they're putting in the work. So check them out. Uh, we'll put a link to their stuff. And um, come on back to Venom Central, guys. We're gonna do some more of this fun stuff. And this is Willie, we're checking out. Later. <laughs>